breaking news this noon. Tom Brady has announced he is leaving the New England Patriots. This is a big story here in Connecticut and for all of the NFL. Hey guys, welcome back to another video, this time on the collapse of the Patriots. I asked you guys last time which video you want to see next, and the Patriots are an overwhelming favorite, so here it is. Be sure to comment which video you want to see next after this. I have some options here you can choose from, but you can ask for anything and I'll eventually do it. Also, 90% of you guys are still not subscribed to the channel. Please consider subscribing and turning on notifications. It's the best way to support this channel. Finally, I just wanted to let you guys know that I created an Instagram page for the channel where I post memes and other stuff. If you guys are interested in that type of thing, go follow me. I'll put the link in the description. And just because of all the support you guys have been giving me, after you follow, shoot me a DM, and I'll send one of you guys a $20 Amazon gift card. Anyway, sorry for the long intro, but without further ado, let's get straight into this video. In the 2016 NFL Draft, the New England Patriots select Cyrus Jones, defensive back, Alabama. To truly understand how the Patriots super team collapsed, we need to go all the way back to 2016. Up to this point, the Patriots were able to build and maintain their dynasty through smart draft picks, trades, and cap moves. Starting with the 2016 draft, we begin to see a decline of quality Patriot draft picks. Out of this draft class of 9 players, people tend to focus on Joe Tooney, who would turn out to be an elite offensive lineman, but the rest of the 8 players barely played for the Patriots before they were either cut or traded. However, in 2016, the Patriots didn't need rookies to carry the team, at least not immediately. The impact of these bad draft classes would only matter down the line. They still had an incredible Super Bowl ready team from last season, ready for this season. The Patriots did make some minor moves by trading away Chandler Jones and letting Hicks walk in free agency, but also improved their offense by signing Chris Hogan, Martellus Bennett, and Jonathan Cooper. Overall, the Patriots are still in their prime and ready to make a deep playoff run. But the start of the season, the Patriots were in a tough spot as Brady was suspended for four games due to the deflating incident, forcing Jimmy Garoppolo to step up as the starting QB. In his first two starts, Garoppolo dominated, showing flashes of becoming the new franchise QB before injuring his shoulder at the end of week three, forcing Jacoby Brissett to step up for the next two games. After two rough offensive games against the Texans and Bills, Brady finally returned and started a dominant streak to finish the season with an 11-1 record, losing only to the Seahawks in a last minute stunner. The Patriots came into the playoffs after setting countless franchise and NFL records and looked to grow their 7 game win streak with a divisional victory over the Texans. Their regular season momentum quickly carried over into the divisional as with only 6 total offensive plays the Patriots were able to jump out to a 14-3 lead. Down the stretch the Texans defense did manage to throw Brady off, intercepting him twice, but running back Deion Lewis was too much for the Texans defense as he finished the game with 1 rushing, 1 receiving and 1 kickoff return touchdown to cruise to the AFC Championship game. They get it over to Lewis. Look at this speed. Deion Lewis to the. It's Deion Lewis. And the two and taken off. 98 yards. In the AFC Championship against the Steelers, the Patriots dominated offensively and defensively, holding the Steelers to only 9 points throughout most of the game and scoring 36 points to easily cruise their 7th Super Bowl appearance in only 16 seasons. Finds a time and that goes in. So as Rodgers, the ball comes out. Was that a clean cat? Airing it out. And that's intercepted. What an in a crazy Super Bowl against the Falcons, the Patriots were down 28-3 midway through the third quarter when the team rallied to score 25 unanswered points to take the game into overtime. In overtime, the Patriots were able to drive down the field as James White punched in the game-winning score to win the Patriots their fifth Super Bowl title. Now this game was absolutely insane and was definitely by far the peak of both Tom Brady, Bill Belichick and even the entire Patriots organization's history. Everything was operating perfectly in sync and I can confidently say that the team we saw in those final two quarters was the most dangerous NFL team I have ever seen. The only problem with hitting an all time high is that you can only go down and ever since this moment the Patriots have been slowly declining. Direct Derek Rivers, defensive end, Youngstown State. The Penguins are on the board. 
Once again, we see an uncharacteristic weak draft class from the Patriots, and what has now been rated the worst NFL draft class of 2017. All the picks made by the Patriots barely played any minutes. The biggest miss was the Patriots trading up for Antonio Garcia, who has yet to play a single snap, trading away the pick that later became Kenny Galladay. However, once again, the Patriots had enough talent that they didn't urgently need rookies to step up. Instead, they decided to focus on signing dominant free agents, which they largely accomplished by acquiring both Stephon Gilmore and Brandon Cooks in free agency. Overall, from the outside, it seemed that the Patriots were ready to run it back one more time. However, everything is not always as it seems. As we later found out through a series of leaks and now confirmed rumors, drama was brewing in the Patriots locker room that began the first pieces of the Patriots demise. So the tensions first began with the arrival of the TB12 method and Brady's personal trainer and partner Alex Guerrero. Before 2017, Brady didn't really care about the business potential of his career, instead of focusing solely on football and growing his legacy as a football player. His close friend Alex Guerrero convinced him to begin to market his lifestyle, starting with his book The TB12 Method. Brady made it clear that he wanted to play until his mid-40s and believed that Guerrero's TB12 method was the way of doing it. Now it is important to realize that at this point, after winning his fifth ring, Brady was a legend in the Patriots buildings and his power had grown to the point that he was considered management by the players and staff. This unprecedented power allowed Brady to bring in Alex Guerrero into the facilities to preach his method of training. Soon, Amendola, Edelman, Gronk, Harmon, Hogan and others began attending his sessions and taking his advice. The only problem was that his advice would usually run counter to what the team doctors were recommending for players to do. Belichick was particularly skeptical about Guerrero's methods and began encouraging players to go to team doctors instead of listening to Guerrero. While on the other hand, Brady was encouraging players to go to Guerrero, calling Belichick's methods far too dated and brute. Eventually, this rift became so much of a problem that Belichick had to step in and essentially ban Guerrero from the Patriot facilities, something that Brady was very upset by. While this drama was ensuing, problems between Brady and Garoppolo also began to emerge. Belichick, who famously believed there's no such thing as long-term sustainability in the NFL, didn't think Brady could play into his 40s, and reportedly was attempting to extend Jimmy G for a multi-year contract to secure a franchise QB to replace Brady, something again Brady was offended by. It was with all these unresolved tensions and problems that the Patriots entered the 2017 season. But as I said earlier, at this time in 2017, it seemed like nothing major was happening as all the drama was hidden within the Patriots organization and all the reports and leaks were disregarded as clickbait. There was no way Tom Brady was going to leave the Patriots after years of dominance. And on the field, the Patriots were proving this assumption as they continued to dominate in 2017. Other than one surprising loss in week one, the Patriots were in Super Bowl form and dominated the competition to a 13-3 record for another first round bye. So while on the outside it seemed like another dominant Patriots season, this unresolved tension had actually converted into a crazy power struggle brewing in New England. In a bombshell report that only came out in 2021, it was revealed that during the 2017 season, Belichick had actually attempted to trade Brady. It all started two weeks before the November 1st trading deadline, when Robert Kraft met with Bill Belichick to discuss the long-term quarterback situation. According to reports which had now been confirmed by Patriot staff, Belichick wanted to discuss possible trades to send Brady to the 49ers and instead keep Garoppolo to further expand the dynasty. Belichick felt that they had gone as far as they could with an aging Tom Brady and they needed to replace him sooner rather than later if they wanted to keep winning. In a long meeting, Robert Kraft finally put his foot down and made the final decision that the Patriots would not be trading Brady and Jimmy G had to go. According to his friends, Belichick was furious and demoralized that Kraft had sided with Brady. Kraft, who had largely remained out of the business of the organization and let Belichick take the reins for the past two decades, had suddenly gotten involved and Belichick felt that it showed a lack of trust in his ability. On the other hand, Brady was equally as furious that Belichick had attempted to trade him and excited both that the owner had his back and that he had close to no competition for a starting job. But once again at the time, none of this drama was showing as the Patriots headed into the playoffs looking like an in-sync dangerous contender. Starting in the divisional, the Patriots cruised past the Young Titans, with their offense racking up 438 yards and 31 first downs, while the defense set a franchise record with 8 sacks on Marcus Mariota. At third and goal, back of the end zone, and it's caught by Hogan for the... Mariota looking for an option, in trouble, and he gets taken down by Adam Buck.
The Patriots had a much harder fight in the AFC against the Jags. After three tight quarters, the Patriots were down by three with five minutes remaining when Brady led the game-winning drive to take a four-point lead with around three minutes left. After an incredible defensive play by Gilmore and run by Deion Lewis, the Patriots advanced once again to the Super Bowl. Fake it to White. Looking around. Has time. Throws it. Did he get the feet down? What an effort. Stepping up and throwing. And it is knocked down by Gilmore. That's what that's telling you. It's Lewis. Lewis running free. And that could very well do it. In their Super Bowl matchup against the Eagles, both offenses were on fire as Nick Foles finished with 373 passing yards and even one receiving touchdown, while Tom Brady threw for a Super Bowl record 505 yards. Despite these amazing plays from both sides, the decisive play came when Eagles' Brandon Graham forced the Brady fumble in the final two minutes to win the game. And they're going to snap it, and it's Trey Burton who throws caught. Foles! Isaiah Wynn, tackle, Georgia. They went with the beast and they won't. Once again, the Patriots had a surprisingly underwhelming draft class, starting with Isaiah Wynn, who has up till now only played 18 games because of various injuries. Their next pick, Sony Michelle, has been alright for the Patriots so far, and in a vacuum is a decent pick. But when compared to Lamar Jackson, Nick Chubb, and Darius Leonard, all players they could have picked, Michelle is an underwhelming addition. Right now, it seems that the Patriots will not be picking up the fifth year options on either of these first round picks, letting them walk in free agency, showing that it wasn't a really good draft. The rest of the draft class barely even played for the Patriots, either getting cut, traded, or riding the end of the bench for the next two seasons. During the offseason, the Patriots saw a lot of their Super Bowl talent disappear, with the running back Deion Lewis, wide receivers Brandon Cook and Amendola, and cornerback Malcolm Butler all leaving the team. To address some of these holes, the Patriots signed receivers Cordero Patterson and Jordan Matthews, along with cornerback Jason McCourty to help out. While these moves did address some problems, it was very clear that the Patriots had lost more talent than they had gained that year. But none of that mattered as the Patriots still had Brady, and as long as they had him, the Patriots are still contending. The Patriots started the season off a rough 1-2, with losses to both the Jags and Lions, but they were soon able to pick it up as they won their next 6 straight. However, this fire started to run out towards the end of the season, as they would close the season 3-3, three three, finishing with 5 losses for the first time since 2009. In the divisional round against the Chargers, the Patriots dominated in the first half, gaining 347 yards and scoring touchdowns on 5 of their first 6 possessions. While the Chargers did try to make a comeback late in the 4th, the Patriots lead was too big and they won comfortably 41-28. to Brady going to the end zone, open his door set! Any more and let him pick you apart. The AFC matchup against the Chiefs was low scoring and razor tight for the first three quarters, before an insane back and forth fourth quarter where both teams combined for 38 points. With less than a minute ago, Tom Brady drove down the field to score a touchdown and take a three point lead in the fourth, before the Chiefs drove down and scored a field goal to send the game to OT. In overtime, Brady drove 75 yards in 13 plays before getting the game winning touchdown to barely advance to another Super Bowl. To Burkhead, Burkhead to the end zone! Hello, Super Bowl, New England! is heading back again for the third straight year. In the Super Bowl matchup against the Rams, it was mostly defense and entering the fourth quarter, the Patriots were down 3-0. Then in the fourth quarter, they managed to score 10 points unanswered to win the game 10-3 to claim yet another Super Bowl victory, one of the lowest scoring ones ever.
the New England Patriots select Nikhil Harry, wide receiver, Arizona State. Once again, the Patriots had an uncharacteristically weak draft class, with Nikhil Harry and Joan Williams both disappointing in their last two years. The only difference with this year was that the Patriots are starting to need some of those previous rookies from 2-3 years ago to step up, which they weren't doing, and the Patriots for the first time in a while had a roster full of holds. One of their biggest holes was their declining receiving core, as they had lost both Chris Hogan and Rob Gronkowski during the offseason. On top of that, Josh Gordon had been suspended by the NFL, and at the time it was unlikely they would be playing that season. Brady recognized his lack of talent and petitioned the front office to add more receivers. A goal they largely failed as they only signed Dontrell Inman and Maurice Harris, two average at best receivers. According to reports, this upset Brady because it furthered his belief that the front office doesn't listen to him. Brady felt that he had earned the right to at least be heard in some of his concerns for the season, but the Patriots largely ignored him and decided to run with their current squad. The Patriots started the 2019 season off with their defense on fire, winning 8 straight games while putting up historic numbers. While their defense was dominating, the Patriots offense was actually lagging behind, as their lack of quality receivers was grounding the offense to a standstill. Eventually this lackluster offense caught up with them, as in the second half of the season, the Patriots went 4-4, four four, stumbling to the end of the season. In a wildcard matchup against the Titans, the Patriots defense struggled to contain Derrick Henry, who was tearing them up all game long. Usually in Patriots football, when one side of the ball struggled, the other side picked up the slack, but this time the offense was far too weak to help out, as they were shut out in the second half, losing 20 to 13. An opportunity in front of them that no one predicted. Well, they can't stop Henry. Look at this offensive line. The best red zone team in the league since Tannehill took over, and they chug along for another first. New England Patriots select Kyle Duggar, defensive back, Lenore Ryan. Finally, after years of tension, unresolved issues, lack of trust, and disrespect, Tom Brady decided to leave the Patriots, packing up his bags and heading to Tampa, creating a giant hole in the Patriots' offense. Many other Patriots followed Brady's exit, including Kyle Van Noy, Jamie Collins, Deron Harmon, Stephen Goskowski, and Philip Dorsett, forcing the Patriots to plug even more holes in a sinking ship. The first hole they attempted to fix was their quarterback situation, as they didn't have any viable backup that could take the reins. To fix this, they decided to sign Cam Newton to take control of the offense as the new QB1. Other than that, the Patriots had a relatively mild offseason and head into the next year without really fixing their receiver problems from last year. The first season in the post-Tom Brady era didn't go well for the Patriots. They began the year well with a 2-1 record, but soon Cam Newton's injuries and the Patriots' lack of young depth destroyed any chance the Patriots had at another Super Bowl, ending with a 7-9 record. After the Patriots' rough season, they decided to go big during free agency, spending $159.6 million in only 9 days to sign big time free agents, including Jalen Mills, Hunter Henry, Nelson Aguilar, Jonu Smith, and Matt Judon, boosting the team once more. While these players gave new light and hope to the Patriots, they're not yet close to being another Super Bowl contending team, yet alone a super team. While it was entertaining to see the Patriots blow through their cash and free agency, this really was an aggressive solution to years of poor drafting and signings that left them in a desperate need for talent. Overall, I think this year, for the first time in two decades, we can say with confidence that the Patriots super team has collapsed. Hey guys, so as I'm editing this video, Julian Edelman, longtime Patriot and commander at the receiving corps, has retired. If we think about the Patriots super team, we think Brady, Gronk, and Edelman. And now, after four years, the Patriots have lost them all.